wrath is coming for you. Death is approaching. You're dying. You're going to stand before God. You know the one you mock? The one you hate? My friends, don't continue believing lies about Christ and your sin. Don't believe lies about your sin, sir. Your sin will condemn you to hell. My name is Sonny Shoker and I am a Christian. Sinners! Because God so loved the world! He loved sinners! And as part of being a Christian, the Lord has called us to preach, specifically in the streets. Don't laugh about your sin, people. My friend, there is a day where all of your sins are going to come out into the open. And I've been doing that for around 10 years now. Jesus came for broken, helpless sinners. Not people who think, no, nah, not me, mate. I'm okay. I don't need Jesus. It's really important that the preacher has the calling, the preacher has the gifts, and the preacher has the life too. I belong to an independent church, that meaning that not part of any denomination or, or kind of like a, or officially part of any wider network of churches. But it's called Grace Fellowship Manchester and it, we're currently meeting in Middleton. It's a, a church that has been a real blessing to my soul. Um, I actually moved down to Manchester to join the church. Which sound, sounds a little bit cultish, like leaving everything from another city to, to come and join a church, but I really struggled to like find a church that I thought was doing things, what I believe to be in accordance with the Bible. Me and you have done things that we know are wrong. Me and you have transgressed God's law. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You want to talk about praying in the Spirit? What does that mean? What, what is there possibly for you to do? Let me mention several things. One is conspire with the Spirit. You say, what is that? Conspire means you concur with Him. So my name is Tim Conway. I came from the United States on a more permanent basis back in January. And I am pastoring Grace Fellowship Manchester. They made an appeal to me to come here and help them after they lost their pastor. I, I told the brethren in Manchester on Friday afternoon, I'm coming. Our church in San Antonio seems to be very healthy and I was the primary preaching pastor there. I had been there since the inception of the church back in 2001. And I had actually been praying that the Lord might open a door for me to be able to go and do what I did there over again. What I see potential for in Manchester is a church like ours. What drives people to do open air evangelism? Those who believe in him would perish, but that all would come to repentance. One, God has changed me. And this is not an ins insignificant change. This this isn't just I got I, I had this radical transformation happen. This is the transformation that has to happen if somebody is going to escape damnation. If suddenly I discovered a cure for cancer, I mean, I, I actually found a fruit that if you eat it, no matter how far you are along in cancer, it cures it. You can be stage four. You can only have a few days to live. You can be riddled with cancer. Your liver can be gone. But if you eat this fruit, you're going to be well immediately. He longs, he desires that you would repent. There's one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus. I've, I've actually got a bushel basket full of that fruit, and there's people all over Middleton and all over Manchester that are dying of cancer. I mean, would you imagine there would be a compulsion to take that and share it with others? That whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting.
fast in life. Growing up as a young child, I was certainly someone who believed in God and I did pray to God. Like there was times when I would be alone, I would be maybe walking along the road and 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 no one else was there and I would start like talking to God. I did feel like he was listening, but I never got an answer back. As I got a little bit older and I started getting more into a, into into drugs, things that were very damaging for me, spiritually, mentally, physically. What did you watch on your phone this morning? What are you doing tonight, guys? I think there was probably like a few years where God wasn't on my mind at all. It was just like a somewhat a big blur. I went out one night, I bought a bunch of like pills. I think they had something dodgy in them, but um, they um, they really messed me up. And I, ha I had some sort of seizure fit. And I just remember crying out to God in my mind, um, saying, please don't let me die, please don't let me die. I really did feel like if I, if I die now, I don't think I'm gonna be going to a good place. But it didn't stop me from taking drugs. I went straight back to drugs again. Condemnation is no light thing. One day, woke up, like I made this little joint and I, I smoked like one or two talks and um, my mind just, just switched in a moment. I was, I was basically having like a serious panic attack. I just started to think of all of the sins that I've done, all of the all of the hatred that I've had towards people, all of the jealousy and the pride and, and the lust and basically God just showed me my sin in such a in such a way that it was it was horrifying, it was really horrifying. It was like wow I really am a sinner. I was just like opening up my heart to the Lord and it was almost like at that point, you know, Satan no longer had a grip. I was born of a Christian then I just went headlong into my sin. You see, no one is born a Christian. You need to be Born again. You ought to love him more if you're truly his disciple. Oh, do you know that in the last day many will come to him? My name is George. Um, I actually originally come from Bulgaria. They perish and they're gone with the wind. They're here no more. But the salvation that God offers is eternal. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, so my parents are not, like most of Bulgaria, everyone is uh, Orthodox Christian. My parents weren't, they were what you would call Protestants or Evangelicals. Talks about people who are crushed under sin. Oh, people who are crushed under oh. So I knew the gospel, I knew the Christian message from, a, from an early age. I, at the same time, I was I rejected it with my life. I didn't want to submit to that message. I, didn't, I wasn't a Christian myself, I knew that I wasn't. Forsake yourself even and cling to Christ. He is the only hope you have. So I went to Newcastle, I went to study there. Um, long story short, I basically started going to a, a church which, which uh, preached the true gospel there. The same, the same kind of gospel which, which I heard back home. Eternal in nature. He is omnipotent. All powerful. Omniscient. He knows all things. He knows what you think right now about me. But uh, for the first time, I realized that I'm not just a sinner. Like, you know, that's the message of the Bible. But actually, I'm a slave to sin. I, I cannot actually liberate myself even if I wanted to. And uh, for the first time, I realized that I need a, I need a savior desperately. Do that. Only God can do that. But only man can pay for what we have done. Like, oftentimes, there is, yeah, people come along and they, they have a problem. Yeah. I hate to say this, too. I hate to say this, yeah. To me, religion, yeah. Bullshit. No, no. You tell me. You, you tell. You tell me. Yeah. One of Jesus's miracles that he did, and I'll explain it. We are not here to preach against a particular group of people. I want to make that very clear. At the same time, we are here to preach that, well, basically, say to people what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Come and listen, mate. Amen, brother. Come and listen, mate. Are your sins forgiven? Are your sins washed, mate? Come and listen, please. Those are serious things. Oh, you can push them off, you can laugh them off, but listen, if your sins are not forgiven... One night I was, uh, couldn't sleep and I really had a strong conviction to go out into the streets of Newcastle and preach. 
even though I struggled with panic attacks in, in 2011, I, I still felt like the Lord wanted me to preach on the streets. And there was times where I'd be preaching on the street and I would literally be having a panic attack as I'm speaking to people. In hell, there is a day where everything is going to be brought out into the open, where every single person gets what they deserve. And I don't want that for you. I was aware that there is somewhat a bare minimal requirement of being a preacher and that would be to be called of God to do it, to have that clear demonstration of that gift of speaking and that gift of teaching and that gift of preaching. A lot of men get drawn into preaching because it is somewhat a place of authority because when we when we preach the Bible we are uh, being authoritative, we're saying that this is true and we are beseeching men to respond to this message and when we were commanding people to repent and believe the gospel. In his mind, when you die, yes, all right, you are going to say that Jesus is real. Somebody that really is gifted that way, they're quick on their feet. They're able to answer objections. They have a good, deep biblical knowledge. They need to know how to diffuse situations. I don't plan what I say now. Like I, you know, when I go each Saturday, I simply want to be led by the Spirit. I mean, the first thing is I want to be true. What I'm saying needs to be true. When I say true, I just mean in accordance with God's word. And secondly, I want to try to make sure that I'm being bold, but also being gracious. I'm, I'm, I'm from Newcastle. Oh, you're a yeah. Yeah. From Newcastle, man. Like I sound like a Magnum. I sound like a because I've been down Manchester for eight years, that's why. That's your sin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Been, been yeah. Right. There has been times where I have felt like I've been a little bit too aggressive or I've said something like a bit unkind. And because naturally, like, I do like to joke, I like I like to have a laugh with my friends and stuff like that, you know, that, but getting up on the ladder sometimes, if you say a joke, it could rub someone up the wrong way and make it look like I'm trying to mock them. But I'm not, I'm just trying to have a laugh with them just to kind of show them, hey mate, you know, I'm a bit like you, you know. Yeah, I'm not, Step the fuck up to me! I wear a GoPro on my, on a chest harness and I suppose it is somewhat a bit of a deterrent if someone has a weapon or is threatening me, but it's certainly good for like if I have interviews with police. Um, like for example, the other week a guy stole my sign and ran away and as I ran to get it off him, and just about to, just about to get my sign, he fell to the ground, and I fell on top of him. And to be honest, I didn't even know what happened. You don't take signs. No, he took my equipment, and I. Stopped. All I know is that I went to go and grab it. He was on the floor, and then I was on the floor with him. So it kind of, from 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 a certain angle, it might have looked like I somehow like rugby tackled him. That was great because I was able to send that to the police, and the police were like, "Yeah, you know, we can see that. You know, this guy stole your sign. You didn't do anything wrong." I've got it recorded. I've got it recorded. Secondly, um, I have a YouTube channel. It's called All for Christ, and I like to share my stuff on there. I can watch it back too, and I can think. There's sometimes where I watch it back, and I think, "Oh, I shouldn't have really said that. I, I should, or I should have clarified something, or I should have made sure that." I'm not speaking literally, I'm speaking figuratively or something like that. So it's kind of good to watch back and critique myself. Manchester. 
to create the atom of the principles and to hand out leaflets and to other people. I pray you bless his time to be here too. And thank you for the burden that you put on his heart to go out and share Christ and pray that today that would prove to be a huge success for the only in Christ's name. Amen. Well, uh, good afternoon, people of Manchester. We are here again today to, to share something with you. In fact, it's actually not just anything, it's, it's the most important news that a man or woman or a child can hear. It's known as the Gospel. So we're out here proclaiming the Gospel, so we're handing out Gospel tracts. And I've got my brother here who is preaching and proclaiming the, the Word of God. Do you come to the light? The light, the light shines. The light exposes the darkness. The light, it reveals that which is hidden. And my friends, there is such thing as light and darkness. Jesus Christ says, I am the light of the world. The light of the world. Are you the light of the world? Manchester is full of uh, all sorts of people. Multi ethnic, multi cultural. So you meet all sorts of people as you can hear. <laughs> so this is Manchester. in hell. And people, listen, I plead if you do take this serious. There is a hell. There is a place where God is going to fight people. It's called hell. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place of outer darkness. It's a place where God... People are basically self-righteous. People believe they're good people. And when you come with the gospel, the gospel's for bad people. The cross screams loudly, man is bad bad. What happened on that cross says man is not good. And once you tell self-righteous people how bad they are, they recoil. Their pride. They rise up. They hate it. They, they don't want to hear it. How did COVID impact the work that we do? Well, yeah, there was a significant impact. You have, for one, the government laying down certain mandates. And then you have the public and their immediate fear of being in crowded places. We want to take advantage of the crowds, but as soon as you have COVID upon the land, suddenly people are trying to avoid crowded areas. Even taking a track, where we hand out tracks publicly, well now somebody taking a track, is COVID on that track? And so in the beginning, you know, you got mask wearing, you got social distancing. Well, the very thing we're trying to do is break down the social distance and get in there where we can talk to people and we can get the gospel to people. The whole lockdown, they're not even wanting people to be out and around each other. And then you have the, the fear that tends to infect the whole population. But I mean, as time has gone on, I think that fear is diminishing. My friends, you are either a slave of sin or a slave of God. There is no one that is free unless the sun sets you free. You might be free of wearing a mask, but are you free from the burden of sin of God? Yes, sir, what's it about? Sorry, I'll look at that. Yeah, what's it about? It's about how the vaccine's a bioweapon killing tens of thousands of people and it's against Christianity. It has some yeah, yeah, but what about sin, sir? Yeah, but that, that is a sin, bro. That's yeah, a yeah. genocide. Yeah, yeah, what about sin? What yeah, about that's your bad sin? as well. Yeah, I've got sin as well. I'm saying, bro, the government are killing people and they're trying to put the mark of the beast in children, so you need to say sure, something about sure. that. What about your sin? Oh, Are you right with God? Sir, what would You're not Christian! You're not Christian! Sir, what would a proper man if he gives the whole world and loses his own soul? 
Oh, my friends, don't be a fool like that man. The Bible says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Oh, please, people, listen, I understand. I know that there's lots of problems in the world, but think about your own life. Think about your own sin before God. I mean, yeah, I know there's people out there, bad things happen to them. When I'm not in Manchester or Newcastle or wherever else, standing on a ladder preaching, I am a Christian and I strive to live like a Christian and that involves every area of my life. In very, very many ways, I'm just like every other person, you know, I work, video editing, photo editing, editing, logo making, you know, my, my own channel, trying to keep content going for that. And I like to go to the gym, I like to work out, I like to keep healthy, I like to play chess, I like to watch um, a movie each each weekend with my family. Don't know what it might be, it might be like a, an Avengers movie or something like that, you know. And I share the gospel with my wife and I share the gospel with my children. I think I'm I think I'm a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> I like and I, and I and I say that um, not stupid stupidly. I, I just I just mean every day. Like I just realize how much like I need the Lord and I, I'm, I'm I'm very weak without Him. And yes, there's a time to laugh and there's a time to joke. But in reality, this life is short and this life is it's actually about living for the Lord. That certainly is how I am on the inside of my mind. I'm just constantly thinking, like, how can I live better for the Lord? Like, and how can I live for him more? And I do that by obviously looking at his word and, and getting truth from it, getting wisdom from it. Who are you? Who are you on the inside? You know, when you strip it all back and you get deep, he was dying for our sins. Isn't that good news? You know, because if you think about it, eye for an eye, two for a two. What does that say about you? What do, what do you deserve, sir? What do you deserve?